Fundamentally, the future is vastly more exciting and interesting if we're a space-faring civilization and a multi-planet species than if we're not. Uh, it, you want to be inspired by things. You want to wake up in the morning and think the future is going to be great. Um, and that's what, uh, what being a space-faring civilization is all about. It's about believing in, in the future and, and thinking that the future will be better than the past. Um, and I can't think of anything more exciting than going out there and being among the stars. What do you think the odds of the Mars colony are at this point? Well, um, oddly enough, I actually think they're pretty good. Um, so, like, when can I go? Okay. Um, at this point, I am certain there is a way. I'm certain that success is one of the possible outcomes for establishing a self-sustaining Mars colony, in fact, a growing Mars colony. I'm certain that that is possible. Um, whereas, until maybe a few years ago, I was not sure that success was even one of the possible outcomes. It's a meaningful number of people going to Mars. I, th I think this is potentially something that can be accomplished in about 10 years, um, maybe sooner, uh, maybe nine years. Um, I need to make sure that SpaceX doesn't die between now and then, and that I don't die, or if I do die, that someone takes over who will continue that. Million person threshold, from the point at which the first ship goes to Mars, it's probably sort of between 20 to 50 um, total Mars rendezvous. So it's, it's, it's probably somewhere between you know, maybe 40 to 100 years. Uh, to achieve a, a fully self-sustaining civilization on Mars. And anyone who, for the early people that go to go to Mars, it'll be far more dangerous. I mean, really, it's, it, it kind of reads like Shackleton's ad for Antarctic explorers. You know, it's like um, difficult, dangerous, good chance you'll die. <laughs> <laughs> Excitement for those who survive. <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, and uh, I think there's not many people who actually want to go in the beginning because all those things I said are true. Uh, but there'll be some who, who will, for, for whom the excitement of the frontier and exploration exceeds the concern of danger. Um, and, uh, and, and they will start off building the most elementary infrastructure, just a base uh, to create propellant, uh, uh, a power station, um, glass domes in which to grow crops, um, all the, the sort of fundamentals um, without which we, you cannot survive. Um, and, and, then, and then really there's going to be an explosion of entrepreneurial opportunity. But I can tell you what, what, what I know currently is the case is that we're, we are building the first uh, ship, the first Mars um, or, inter, or interplanetary ship. Um, right now, and I think we'll be able to do short flights, short sort of up and down flights, um, probably sometime in the first half of next year. And this is, this is a very big um, booster and ship. The liftoff thrust of this would be about twice that of a Saturn V. Um, but because Mars has a lower gravity than Earth, you, can, you do not need a booster. So you can go all the way from the surface of Mars to the surface of Earth just using the ship. Um, albeit you need to go for to, to a max payload number of about 20 to 20 to 50 tons um, for the return journey to work. But it's a single stage, a single stage all the way back to Earth. I feel uh, fairly confident that we can complete the ship and be ready for a launch in about five years. Five years seems like a long time to me. Um, when do you think, realistically, human beings will land on Mars for the first time? I feel fairly confident about uh, six years from now. So every, the, the Mars, uh, Earth-Mars synchronization occurs roughly every 26 months. So we had one this year, the summer, and uh, so that means in roughly like about two years there'll be another one, um, and uh, then two years after that. So I think, I'd say if you say six years from now, I think highly confident. Uh, if we get lucky, maybe four years, and then we, want to try to send a uncrewed vehicle there in two years. When will your first trip to orbit will take place? I don't know, possibly in two or three years. I mean, I'm mostly concerned with developing the technology that can enable uh, a lot of people to go to Mars and make life multi-planetary, have a base on the moon, 
um, a city on Mars, the, and I think it's important that we strive to have a self-sustaining city on Mars as uh, soon as possible. Um, I mean, I'm optimistic about the future on Earth, but uh, it's important to have life insurance for life as a whole. One option if we want to become a multi-planet civilization, and that's, that's Mars. Uh, we could conceivably go to our moon, um, and I certainly have nothing against going to the moon, but I think it's, it's challenging to create a, uh, become multi-planetary on the moon because it's, it's much smaller than, than, than a planet. Uh, it doesn't have any atmosphere. It, it's not as resource rich as Mars. Um, it's got a 28 day day, whereas the Mars day is 24 and a half hours. Um, and it, in general, Mars is, is far better suited to ultimately scale up to be a self-sustaining civilization. The window of possibility is open for us to extend life to another planet. Um, to the best of our knowledge, life uh, exists only on Earth. I mean, I, it, you know, there's a good argument that it exists elsewhere, but we've seen no sign of it. I think it's important for us to take advantage of that window while it is open and to, to establish life on another planet in the solar system, uh, just in case something goes wrong with, with Earth. Um, and uh, you know, it could be there could be either a natural or man-made uh, disaster uh, that knocks the technology level below that which is possible, where it is possible to to travel to another planet. The key to establishing a self-sustaining Mars civilization is getting the cost uh, per unit mass low enough that there's an intersection of sets: the set of people that wish to move to Mars and the set of people that can afford to move to Mars, uh, inclusive of government aid. I mean, right now, we can't even get one person to Mars. We'll want to uh, offer round trips because uh, a lot more people will be willing to go if they think that if they don't like it, they can come back. Earth-Mars synchronization happens roughly every two years. So every two years, there's a, an opportunity for um, to, to fly to Mars. Uh, so then in 2024, uh, we want to try to fly four ships, uh, two of which would be crewed, and two, which, two, two cargo and, and two, two crew. Um, the, the goal of, 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 the, uh, of these initial missions is to, is to find the best source of water. That's for the first mission. And then the second mission, the goal is to build the, the propellant plant. How much time before there's regular travel back and forth to Mars? Well, I think it's going to take a while to build a real civilization. The threshold that really matters is we're getting past the great filter uh, is we have enough resources on Mars such that if the uh, if the spaceships from Earth stop coming you can for, survive yeah so you, now you can only be just missing one little thing you'd be like you're on a long sea voyage and the only thing you're missing is vitamin C uh, yeah, it's, not, uh, it's only a matter of time you know yeah and there's gonna be curtains so you got to have uh, all the things necessary to sustain civilization on Mars. Um, and the reason that the shifts from Earth stop coming could be World War III or it could be due to a slow decline of civilization. So civilization here on Earth could end with a bang or a whimper. So there's, there's been a lot of great work um, by NASA and, uh, and other organizations in early exploration of Mars and understanding uh, the, what, what Mars is like, where could we land, what's the composition, of, of, the, of the atmosphere, where, where is there water, um, water ice, I should say. And, and so uh, we need to go from these early exploration missions to actually building a city. That's fascinating. I was just wondering if, if you were to start over with a clean sheet of paper on governance, is, do you think a framework that could be envisioned that encompasses other sentient beings to come, meaning the AIs and others who might clamor for their rights alongside, Why? right? Uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's difficult to predict, but I can say, like, I think probably we would, elect, would aim for a more direct democracy. Um, and then I, and, and I was talking to Larry Page about this, and he had a, like a good suggestion, like we should limit the number of words in a law. Because mm. um, like we, we have these like thousand-page laws that get mm -hmm. passed, and like nobody's read them. Twitter equivalent of parsimony. Yeah, like I don't know, a thousand-word better count or something mm -hmm. like that. Like if you, can't, if you can't write the law in a thousand words, then probably it shouldn't be there. In the long term, you can use solar power to, to extract CO2 from the atmosphere, combine it with water, and produce uh, uh, fuel and oxygen for the rocket. 
So the same thing that we would do on Mars, uh, we could do on Earth uh, in the long term. Uh, but that, that's essentially what happens. Similar to, to, to the moon, you land, land on, on Mars, but the tricky thing with Mars is you, we do need to build a propellant depot uh, to uh, refill the tanks and return to Earth. When will there be a manned SpaceX mission and when will you go to Mars? Well, we're pretty close to, to, do it, to, to uh, sending crew up uh, to the space station. That's currently scheduled for the end of next year. Yeah. Um, so that'll be, that'll be exciting uh, with our uh, Dragon 2 spacecraft. And then um, uh, we'll have a next generation uh, rocket and, and, and spacecraft um, beyond the Falcon Dragon series. Uh, and I'm hoping to uh, describe the, that, that architecture um, later this year uh, at the International Astronautical Congress, uh, which is like the, the big international space. Uh, event every year, um, so th I think that that'll be quite exciting. Yeah. And um, in, in terms of me going, I, I, I don't know, maybe four or five years from now, maybe going to the space station would be nice. Oh wow. Um, and um, and then in terms of the first uh, flights to Mars, and we're hoping to do that in the in around 2025. SpaceX is an astonishing achievement, but uh, you've also got your plans for Mars. The thing about the future is just. If, if we're out there exploring stars, it's so much more exciting and inspiring than one where we are forever confined to Earth. And a Mars mission? Yeah, so uh, in order to make Mars work, we, we need kind of the next generation of, of rockets and spacecraft. And we think we've got something that will enable people to move to Mars for approximately half a million dollars. Half a million dollars? Yeah. And you can get a free return to t ticket with that, by the way. So the thing that most people say about you is the vision of the future that you have is quite breathtaking. And so many times along the way, people have naysayed, haven't they? I guess there's certainly been a lot of attacks. Um, one thing I've, I've noticed in recent months and years is that it's become uh, obvious to a lot of the entrenched interests that, that Tesla and SpaceX are not going to die. Um, previously, they thought, well, they just basically ignored us or laughed at us. Now we're actually starting to make real inroads and they're treating us as a real threat. Um, and so the, it, is, it is quite daunting. So by establishing a propellant depot on, in the asteroid belt or on one of the moons of Jupiter, um, you can go to, you can make flights uh, from uh, Mars to Jupiter, no problem. Um, in fact, even from, even without a propellant depot at Mars, you can. You can do a flyby of, of Jupiter uh, without a propellant depot.